May your struggle keep you near the cross. And may your troubles show that you need God. And may your battles in the way they And may your bad days prove that God is good. May your whole life prove that God is good. See, may your struggles keep you near the cross. And may your trust Thank y'all so much for coming out. May your bad day prove that God is good. May your whole life prove. God is good. See, may your bad day prove that God is good. Come on. May your whole yeah. Good evening, Allen family, and welcome to Hour of Power. Today we have Gospelist Pew, who will lead us this evening in praise and worship. Won't you welcome him as he comes in his own way? Well, praise the Lord, Allen Chapel. Hey, Pastor Bell, I'm honored to be able to share in worship with you all on tonight. I just got a message that God wishes above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul would prosper. So whatever healing you stand in need of this evening, whether emotional or psychological, listen, God is waiting and ready to administer healing to you. So lift your hands right where you are and just anticipate the healing virtue flowing right to you tonight. God wants to heal you everywhere you hurt. Yes, everywhere you hurt. God will see you through and he'll take the pain away. He wants to heal you yes, he does. Everywhere you hurt. God. God will see you yes, he will. I've seen him do it over and over again. Listen. God shall provide for you each and every day. So just lift your hands and say, you find a way. I'm going to say it with us. 
Yes, he will. He's Jehovah Jireh. Each and every day. Lift your hands and say, I'm need. Now listen, wherever you are, at home, in the living room, in the kitchen, driving in your car, wherever you are, come on, just lift your, just make this cry unto the Lord. God wants to heal you. Everywhere. Yes, sir. everywhere you hurt. God will see you through. He's done before. He'll do it again. Take the pain away. I know he does. Everywhere. Everywhere you hurt. I want to prophesy it to you this evening. Listen. He shall provide for you. Each and every Gotta lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you right away. I know He will every day. Great is His faithfulness. Lift your hands, lift your hands and say, Lord, oh, yeah. Just tell him, I need you. Tell him, I need you. You, Lord, we need you. Come on, receive his healing. this opportunity to thank recording artist Ernest Pugh for sharing his ministry gift with us tonight with his song God Wants to Heal You, such an appropriate song in this season and I thank God for him I thank God for his gift and the blessing that he is to the kingdom of God. I want to share with you for a few moments not long tonight out of the book of Psalm, Psalm 27 and in your leisure would ask that you would um, many of you all know that psalm very well you know it by heart but I just want to read a couple of verses in Psalm uh, just to give a ground of where we are and give you an understanding of where I want to go I want to read Psalm to begin at verse 1 the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Go down to verse 5, and it reads, For in the time of trouble, in the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. Then finally go to verse 13 finally conclude with verse 13 I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living wait on the Lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait on the Lord and he shall strengthen thine heart Psalm 27 is a unique psalm particularly for today because it offers for us, God's help for now and God's hope for our future in these dismal days. This psalm infuses or injects this unwavering confidence in God who really becomes the antidote to fear and fear. It is a psalm that helps to calm your nerves and gives you assurance that because God is at work and trust with everything that's going on in these days, God really, truly is at work. And somehow, God is going to work all things out, everything out, in your favor. And God really, tonight, wants you to walk in that confidence because God, some chilling times, 
some chilling and unprecedented times we are living in. The fact remains that this coronavirus has really changed the way we live our daily lives. There are now so many cases and the corona surging in many states and models are projecting that by October there'll be over 180,000 deaths. Our rooms are filling up to capacity with no containment of the virus in sight. On today, we can praise God that three men were indicted in the death of Aubrey, Ahmad Aubrey, but black men are still being gunned down unjustifiably by police. And civilians, civilians who take the law into their hand, shooting down black men as well. A noose, a noose was found in the garage of the first black NASCAR driver in the history of NASCAR. The FBI found the noose and coincidentally concluded that the noose had been there since of 2019. The future of the American economy is looking bleak and many economists are already saying that we are in a recession. Right now in the city of New York, the mayor is there contemplating the loss and the layoff of 22,000 city employees because their city blood budget has been hit, devastated, decimated by the coronavirus and trying to keep up and to heal those sick persons in the community of New York who were afflicted by the virus. The American economy has been politicized and I'm sorry, the American military has died by this president and our nation is divided. Add to that the domestic violence that has increased in the African community, where there was a video showing recently a black man who picked up a skateboard, hit a black woman, and knocked her out cold while black men stood around laughing. We're living in some very critical times. And then to add on top of that, this person at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, he was supposed to be the president of the United States, who in the midst of this public health crisis still has this profound need for personal praise, this propensity to blame, and to never take responsibility for his and his administration's massive failures during these critical times, but he did everything but refuses to take responsibility for anything. And you cannot be a leader. You cannot be a leader, credit for everything, but won't take responsibility for anything. And then add all of this to his lack of human empathy, this proclaim for the distortion of facts. He has this torturous relationship with the truth and this proclivity to to twist facts constantly about misinformation and has totally disregarded and disdained the advice of medical experts who are around the midst of this. And it is mind numbing, mind boggling, and it is unbelievable what we're experiencing. We are living in a time that none of us has ever seen in our lifetime, and it is enough. It's enough to really cause us anxiety, feeling vulnerable, confused, because we don't know when the end will be and the uncertainty that comes with each and every day. But David said, the Lord is my light. And these are some dark times, but we are going to get through this. The Lord is my light and my station. He protects you and I from danger. Whom shall I fear? And fear button or the switch on faith. Fear will leave your mind space in a place where you're emotionally inebriated and anesthetized by anxiety, worry, frustration, despair. But faith will place you in a position of peace, a place of content, a place of confidence. And one of the things that the enemy does hate, the enemy hates it when you and I are at a place of peace particulars like these. And tonight, I want to speak to somebody who needs the peace of God right now because you're feeling 
some angry and you don't feel like you don't have the assurance about your job future or how you're going to pay your bills if the economy shuts down again, how you're going to keep food in your and if we're going to have a food shortage in the market where the meat trays and the freeze are bare in the supermarket. But God is getting ready to give somebody some peace and somebody really needs it tonight. And because it has God's hand is upon your life. God has it in his hands and it upsets the enemy when God gives you peace because he hates it when you and I have a spirit of contentment, a spirit of confidence, a spirit that we feel like that in the times of trouble, God will hide us in the pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. Psalm 27 says through David, he will hide because it's a place, the secret place, the secret tabernacle is a place that the enemy can't get into. The enemy can't find you. Troubles and problems and difficulties and challenges and struggles and worries can enter into this place when you're in the pavilion, God, in the secret place. They can't get in because the Lord will hide you. He'll hide you. Somebody say, Lord, hide me. He'll hide in the secret place of his pavilion. But David says one more thing. He says, I would have fainted unless I believe to see the, the Lord in the land of the living. David says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen thy heart. What then is, my heart would have dropped. My emotions would have exploded. My feelings, my headspace would have fallen apart. I was able to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Somebody tonight can really declare and testify that God is truly good to you. Somebody shout tonight, don't faint, because you know for a fact God has still, in the midst of everything that has been going on, God has still been wonderfully good unto you. Everything can shut down, businesses can close, jobs can be, you know, within your spirit, that God has still been good. You haven't been infected yet by the coronavirus. And some of you all tonight, I'm saying to, you've had the symptoms of it. You've had the symptoms, but it didn't overtake your body. It didn't wipe you out. It didn't take you down. God and hide you and hid you in the secret place of his pavilion. And you ought to lift up your hands today and thank God that God is still a protector, that somehow that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ still covers you. You should have been affected, but God has blessed you. God has given you food to order to drink. God has given you whatever money you have in your purse or your pocketbook or your wallet. So you ought tonight trying to keep you in fear, in despair, depressed, broken, suffering, exposed, and God still has been good. Somebody tonight ought to lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Because God, you've been really ought to lift up your hands tonight and tell the Lord, I'm grateful for everything that God has done in spite of what I may deal tonight, who is wrestling with some challenges, who are wrestling with some difficulties, who are in the midst of some major situation. Make it out. The Lord says, I'm your light. I'm your salvation, that I'm the one who's in control of everything that is going on. And when we think about everything that is happening from this coronavirus, virus pandemic to the racial unrest that's going on in this nation to the collapse of God who is speaking to each and every one of us it is God who is moving in our lives it is the Holy Spirit that is in his power because the Holy Spirit is a movement that's why monuments are coming down confederate flags are coming 